Texas Model 2.0 builds on the foundation of the Texas Model that exists currently. When we started with reform in Texas Model, we had to do a lot of work moving away from a compliance-based model that used punishment, fear, um, threat of punishment in order to gain compliance. And compliance is not behavior change. And so the foundation of the Texas Model was establishing that you do have to have a relationship with the youth as the stable, safe adult in the room. Uh, and that, that's where this starts. When we move into 2.0, um, it moves away from uh, us as the adults providing all the regulation for the youth to teaching the youth how to regulate themselves. What skills do they need to get out and be in the community and go home safely and manage their behaviors? And so these are really concrete skills that are going to be tailored to each youth's need that will hopefully help them not just manage behavior in the facility, but when they get out. So when we think about the risk factors for recidivism um, that are well defined already by, by research, we want to make sure that we're providing skills to youth to address some of the deficits that they come in with. The specific skill set that DBT provides, uh, it's about controlling one's attention, which in, in fact is a risk factor for recidivism. It's surprising, your inability to control your own attention. Getting along with others, getting things from others uh, in pro-social ways. Emotion regulation, which is a really important part, uh, emotion dysregulation or the inability to control your emotions, um, is a big predictor of a lot of problematic behavior. So helping youth be able to control their emotions is, is a really core um, set of skills that we can provide for them. And then the ability to tolerate when things aren't going the way that you want. Uh, a lot of our kids act out of frustration. Um, they act thinking that if they up the ante that maybe whoever is making the decisions will change or that they can escape from a given situation. And so we have a set of skills that help you to kind of recognize what things they can change and what to do when they can't change things and how to just sort of sit still and do nothing while you're waiting for the situation to pass or to, to evolve. So those core skill sets are what's, what's taught in DBT, and those also happen to match up really well to uh, risk factors and vulnerabilities that, that are predictive of recidivism. So we wanna make sure that all of our kids, if they don't have those skills, they're learning them here. If they do already have some of those skills on board, this is gonna give them a more complete toolbox. We wanna make sure everybody leaves TJJD having that toolbox full. I want folks to know that this is not just a new rehabilitation model. This Texas Model 2.0 is a continuation of 1.0. Now there are, are new programs, there are new focuses, there are new things that we are building out, but we had to do Texas Model 1.0 to be at the place today where we can move 2.0 into the, into the future. As the facilities that are providing this structured environment and safe environment for the youth to engage in their rehabilitation, we've got to do things that are different than how they do it out in the community. Uh, so we have to have this rehabilitative milieu. We have to have uh, this ability for youth to engage in their programming, their specialized treatment, their education, but also practice those skills in their dorm life. And we do that through Texas Mall 2.0 principles like DBT. And we do that by making sure that uh, everyone on the team has the same information. They're working with the youth. They can identify the skills that the youth is working on right then and there um, and have this collaborative approach to to uh, help move the youth forward in their integrated model and in their youth-specific treatment plan. It is a team approach of staff that care about kids that are here to be agents of change, that through staff connecting with those youth, teaching those youth to have a life worth living uh, is our desire and it's our passion. Um, and to do this, youth need to be held accountable for their actions. They need to be shown uh, different skill sets and better way to handle problem areas. Uh, and, and we all want them to be successful, but it is definitely a very much a team approach by everyone that works with the youth. I think that building connections is something we've been doing in juvenile justice since I started 30 years ago. I think that it's important to build that. I think it's important to show the youth we're, we're gonna work together, we, won't, we wanna make it. Uh, we want to make you successful, have a life worth living. You know, that's a DBT concept. We can punish and punish and punish, but if we don't teach them a skill to redo their behavior, they're never going to have it, right? If they don't have the skills, we assume people have skill sets. 
we've seen people that don't. When they don't have the skill set and the basic social skills to be successful, they're going to fail and our youth are going to fail. And almost every one of our youth is going to get out. And if we don't make them better, they're going to re-offend re and they're going to victimize people in our community. We want to help them to do better. Right? We want to give them all the tools necessary so when they get out, they can be successful. If we give them the tools necessary, we have done our job. If we do not give them the tools, then we have not done our job and have not helped them rehabilitate. DBT skills that we are implementing for youth can be taught by any staff. Um, it is not a clinician specialized treatment, right? We are moving to a residential program that treatment starts from day one. From the day you set foot in TJJD, your treatment begins. And that requires that all of our staff from JCOs and case managers and parole officers in the community, we're all speaking a similar language and uh, developing skills with the youth that are going to be throughout the continuum. Uh, and you don't need to have a master's degree or be a, a mental health provider to do this. It really is for everybody.